Welcome to this week's edition of our program focused on African women's health. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate your time. This is a program that is committed to promotion of African women's health at home and abroad. We share the global message of health for all and continue to emphasize that African women must not be left behind in optimal health. This is Dr. Laido Gushiji of the School of Nursing and Navy Free, Western Sydney University, Sydney, Australia. Last week, we started our conversation on an important women's health topic, family planning. And we looked at uh, a number of benefits of family planning, as well as where one can um, access this service. Um, today, our focus will be specifically on postpartum family planning. That is the family planning after childbirth. And this is an important component of women's health, especially when we consider the fact that sexual and reproductive issues are of concern to women after childbirth. There are studies that show that about 95% of women who are zero to 12 months postpartum want to avoid uh, pregnancy within the next 24 months. However, only about 70% of them use um, contraception. And the, um, the implication of this is that there is high risk of adverse health outcomes because pregnancies in the postpartum period pose a lot of, great, a lot of uh, risk uh, for women. Now we look at um, contraceptives generally, there are um, traditional uh, methods which include um, close monitoring of menstrual cycle, which some people refer to as the calendar method. There is also the withdrawal, the withdrawal method, whereby um, the uh, husband withdraws um, the, the penis before there is ej before ejaculation. And um, the issue with this two traditional approach is that of um, is only about 73 to 75 percent um, are likely using this type of method, and the failure rate is um, relatively higher than the um, modern methods. Meanwhile, uh, modern methods of uh, contraception include intrauterine um, devices, which is also known as IUDs, implants, pills, um, condoms, and um, a number of other uh, approaches that are uh, used in, uh, as, uh, in, a, um, in, a, in a contemporary uh, period. The, and with these modern uh, approaches, we find out that as high as um, 96 to 99% of people are likely to use this approach and um, you know, higher, uh, higher uh, report of success have actually been uh, recorded for this modern uh, method of contraception. So if we look specifically though, with uh, postpartum period, which is our uh, concern uh, today, one major question or concern that women usually raise um, around this period is the is whether there are uh, contraception um, options for them, especially while having uh, while breastfeeding their babies. But what we find out, according to World Health Organization record, is that there are a number of options that are available for breastfeeding women, and um, depending on when they had their babies. In the first instance, um, if we look at, okay, let's say for example, um, if a woman had uh, a baby in less than 48 hours, there are possible options of IUDs or intrauterine, uh, intrauterine uh, devices, IUDs. Um, the woman can also decide to use implants or progesterone only pills, also known as mini pills. If um, childbirth occurred within uh, 48 hours or four months, or if let's say if a woman had a baby 
in, within the last 48 hours or four months. The woman has also has the option of implant or progesterone only uh, pills available to her that she can use. Meanwhile, if is within the last um, six weeks to six months ago, there are even a lot more options. And this include IUDs, implants, progesterone only injectables, as well as progesterone only pills. The issue then mainly is if there is concern at any time, we encourage you to see your uh, medical doctor or you can you know, seek um, counsel from a midwife or a trained healthcare worker. The bottom line is the head risk that is associated with pregnancy during a postpartum period can be prevented and it can only start with you and start with me. And that is where we're going to stop for today. Thank you so much for your time. Again, this is Dr. Lai Dogoshiji of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Western Sydney University. And next week, we're going to continue our conversation on uh, another topic that are relevant to women's health. And until then, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. Please share this video, watch it, and let's continue to promote African women's health at home and abroad. Thank you so much. And it's bye for now.